This episode of the podcast is generously hosted by Progressive Equity Research. Visit their website at progressive-research.com. Hello and welcome to episode 17 of the Desert Island Investor. Today we're talking about Entain PLC, ticker symbol ENT, which is an international sports betting and gambling company. It's listed on the London Stock Exchange and is a constituent of the FTSE 100 Index. Entain owns many well-known betting brands such as Ladbrokes, Corral, Party Poker, B-Win, Sporting Bet and Foxy Bingo. The group employs over 2,800 employees and contractors in locations across Europe, Oceania, Asia, North and South America. Now, Mark is not known for taking coins out of his pocket for any reason, let alone flipping them to see if they land heads or tails, so I'm interested to see why he's taken a gamble on gambling as an investment. Let's find out. Good afternoon, Mark. Good afternoon, Paul, or should it be uh, Pablo, because I'm currently in uh, Santiago in Chile, and the only coins I'm using at the moment are uh, Chilean pesos. Uh, Just before we get into Entain, I'd just like to say that uh, when I left you on the island with your friends Flash the Turtle and Gordon the Gecko, I thought you might be bored, but you've been working on uh, our new website, Paul. I have indeed, yes. We have a a new website at www.thedesertislandinvestor.co.uk. It's a kind of a landing page. It gives links through to the various podcasting channels that uh, the Desert Island Investor is available on, Uh, Spotify and Amazon Music and Apple Podcasts. And, of course, to um, Progressive Equity Research, uh, who also very kindly uh, host the Desert Island Investor, Yes, and I believe uh, we've got the facility now for people to leave their questions because previously uh, it's just been able to leave a question via YouTube or direct with me on uh, through LinkedIn. So now people can drop a question for our our other podcast, our mini podcast, Questioning in a Bottle, Paul. Yes, that's that's correct. Yes, there's a form uh, on the on the website um, uh, with a link from the homepage, and you can go off and ask Mark. Um, a, a sort of a question about about uh, investing. Yeah, well, I had a quick, quick proofread of it, and I, ca- I couldn't find anything saying desert, desert island inventor, or else uh, describing me as a private investigator, Paul. So it looks it looks pretty good to me. So come on, let's get on to Entain. Okay. Um, yeah, it has a, a market capitalization of six point two billion, uh, a PE of fifteen point nine, and a yield of one point eight percent, and that's on the current share price of £9.63 and it has the ticker symbol ENT. Okay, so what were the merits that attracted you towards the gambling sector that many may consider controversial, especially with the current focus on ESG? Well, it it wasn't gambling, but hotels that appealed to me. And the genesis of this holding dates back about 35 years, would you believe, to a stock I held called Lonraw who were led by a a maverick, a very colourful, larger-than-life figure called Tiny Rollins. Uh, Perhaps you've heard of him or them, Paul? I I vaguely remember Lonro affair. It was some kind of scandal, wasn't it? Yeah, I think there were several scandals, to be honest, Paul. Um, He was was, uh, never aware from uh, uh, controversy, wasn't, wasn't Tiny. Anyway, this was one of my first holdings, and it was a conglomerate. Now... These were very popular at, at one time. A cotton conglomerate is a, is a kind of euphemism for a collection of wildly differing businesses with little or no synergies. Now, the appeal to shareholders was that they had exposure to different businesses, hopefully with varying cyclicality and risk. However, uh, they were very unwieldy, and it's very difficult to have a, a command across a, a broad spectrum. Now, Hanson Trust uh, was another popular and successful conglomerate, and there were there are a number of others. However, uh, they fell out of fashion, really, and the investors look for a greater focus. So what specific sectors were Lonro involved in? Well, they, they owned the Observer newspaper, which I don't think made a profit, but was a bit more of a, a businessman's play toy. Um, directors often <laughs> indulge themselves in these. They had mining activities, uh, platinum and gold, car dealerships, Agricultural interests across uh, Africa with um, printed stamps, textiles, property, construction, brewing, buses, trucks and aircraft, agricultural machinery. It was a real mishmash. 
and hotels. So by the mid 1990s, uh, Longrose fortunes were beginning to wane, and they started looking at disposals. And one of their better assets within the portfolio that could raise significant capital was the Metropole Hotel chain, which consisted of just five hotels. And this was sold in 1996 to Stakis, who were a hotel and casino group. Stakis were founded by a Cypriot, uh, Rio Stakis, who became Sir Rio Stakis, uh, who had settled in Glasgow, and he built a restaurant and hotel chain predominantly in Scotland. Uh, in later years, it had started to flounder but the family management stood aside, uh, which is uh, always a wise move when things don't work any longer. Uh, and a new team headed by David Michels, who had previously been with Hilton UK, uh, he, 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 he moved in and we really turned this business around. So I considered the, the Metropole disposal something as a, of a fire sale. I'd stayed at their very large hotel that's beside the uh, NEC. And at this time I was working as a, a sales representative and occasionally staying in Stackish hotels around the country. And I was really impressed by how good they were uh, and how busy they were. And uh, besides hotels, they also owned casinos and the Living Well Health Clubs. And you also told me that you made this a significant weighting in your portfolio, which was still early days for you. Yes, uh, very rarely you feel that there's a really good opportunity and you're convinced to uh, commit with conviction. And this was one such time. I really thought the management team knew what they were doing. Uh, this was an example of backing the management as much as just looking at the business. Now, what followed after just uh, three years was that Labrooks, who owned uh, uh, the Hilton International Hall chain, Tell chain, uh, made a bid for Stackis in a mixture of cash and shares. And this represented a premium of about 41%. Now, this premium was already on top of some gains. Now, at the time, and I would not recommend this, and I would not do this now at my time of life, but the stack is holding following the bid represented some 61% of my portfolio. So you can see how this turbocharged my performance. So now you have cash and Ladbroke shares. Yes, uh, Labrook changed their name to Hilton Group uh, now that this was their, their core business and the, the Stackis hotels were rebranded and importantly, the bulk of that Stackis team, management team, moved across to Hilton in senior roles, including David Michels again, and he returned to Hilton to head the group. So in addition to the shares I received, I used the cash element to buy more Hilton Group stock. I can see um, a bit of a pattern developing here. Yes, yeah, so a uh, Hilton Group uh, had the license to use the Hilton name for all hotels outside the US. Uh, the US hotels were owned by Hilton Corporation and the two groups uh, worked very closely with branding and uh, sharing a reservation system. So therefore, it was little surprise to me when in 2005, Hilton Corporation made a takeover bid of the Hilton Hotel in the UK, uh, not including the, the gambling aspect. So the company uh, once again uh, returned to the name Labrooks and uh, as that was its, its core business and Hilton Corporation paid $5.7 billion in cash. So, so now is the point that you own a, a pure gambling business? Yeah, uh, and uh, to admit it's not an area that I feel I've, I've got a, a less of a, a handle on uh, than the hotels, but yeah. Uh, I've got this holding really a little by default, but I've decided to continue the journey. Um, in 2016, in keeping with the increased consolidation in the sector, Labrooks uh, merged with the uh, major competitor Coral to form Labrook Coral. Uh, and in 2017, acquisitive GVC Holdings made a successful bid for Labrook Coral again, uh, a mixture of cash and, and paper. And uh, in December 2020, GVC changed its name to Entain, and, and that's where we stand today. Well, this, this link you, that uh, you've had during various guises has lasted like 35 years. So have you some kind of emotional attachment to this business? Uh, I, I'd, honestly, I'd honestly say no. Uh, I wouldn't describe it as, as one of my favourites. It currently sits in the middle of the portfolio, and I'm not really looking to add. And... It's one, not a, a company that I do deep research into, so it's relatively low maintenance. 
Now, the beauty of being a private investor is that if you so wish, you can do it ir irrational acts, uh, like having the 61% of your portfolio in one stock. Uh, and I, I do think this is an interesting sector. Uh, bricks and mortar betting shops have been giving way for some time, and there's the opening up of the US market with various states making sports betting legal and in turn of expertise and exposure to this market. Now, you can love a stock, but it can't love you back. But with N10, I'm using as something of a, of a wild card, a joker in the pack to use a, a gambling theme. Uh, and I've no idea where it'll end, but I'm prepared to sit back and watch the, you know, the chips land where they may. Now, the portfolio is loosely assembled with stocks having various roles, uh, a bit like a football team. Uh, income stocks are the defenders. Growth stocks are the attackers and, and the midfielders are expected to, uh, to, to do a bit of both. Uh, but some players come along like, like Eric Cantona and Sir Alex Ferguson gives him freedom uh, that is not extended to the rest of the team. So Entain is my Cantona. Uh, can you imagine me having to try and explain that, that, that to my line manager, Paul? But uh, <laughs> thankfully, I don't have to. Right. Well, uh, let's take a look at that enormous potential market, uh, the United States. Yeah, well, the exposure comes from Bet uh, MGM, which was founded in 2018 and is a joint venture between Entain and MGM Resorts International, which is a hotel, casino and entertainment business. Uh, they operate the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas. You may have seen that in Ocean's Eleven. Now, I understand that as recently as 2018, the Supreme Court allowed each state to enforce its own sports betting laws. And I think there are now 37 states in which it's legal. And I wouldn't be surprised if eventually it's not a clean sweep. So the fit was that online betting became legal and widely used and Entain has a seasoned track record of how to manage this market. So why has the mood suddenly changed in the US? And, um, and why is there the change in legislation? I think it's a fam familiar story, Paul. Uh, the desire for states to raise handy tax revenue, uh, a nice windfall, previously not available. Um, I was recently out in, in Mauritius and had a very pleasant lunch with Daniel Washburn, who's one of the, the uh, partners at Fundsmith. And uh, it was the day following when New Zealand announced that they would be reversing the legislation to ban anybody born after 2008 from, from buying cigarettes. Um, and that was down to the tax that it generates. And Daniel said that there, uh, I thought it's quite amusing that um, he thought there was only one thing more addictive than tobacco, and that's a government's desire to raise money through taxation. So vices, vice industries like gambling, tobacco, and alcohol are easy targets for taxation. And in the UK in 2008, you know, for, for example, soft drinks industry level was introduced. Uh, this was more widely known as the sugar tax. So it's, it's an argument. Are taxes brought in to promote behavioural change or generate revenue? Now, you went through that history of corporate activity with mergers and takeovers, but I understand Entain themselves have received a couple of bids. Yes, in January 2021, MGM, uh, with whom they have the joint venture, made a bid at £13.83, valuing the group at £8 billion, and that was a 20% premium. Then only a few months later, in September 2021, DraftKings made a bid at £25, and then up that to £28. Now, obviously, both these were rejected, but you can see from that doubling of the offers in nine months how rap rapidly predators thought this potential market was growing, especially as the states were allowing sports betting, where they were, the states seemed to be falling like dominoes. Now, here we are a couple or three years later, and the price is back at £9.63. I've read that Entain were hit with a, a not an insignificant fine for some wrongdoing. Um, I expect that didn't uh, really help the cause. Yes, this dates back to between uh, 2011 and 2017, when previous management uh, were in stewardship, uh, but they were found to be evidence of bribery in the Turkish market. Uh, now, it sold this business back in 2017, but the deal had been done. Now, I'm not sure to what extent the fine was what we would call proportional, but this was some 585 million payable over four years. That's very generous. Uh, they had to pay a 10 million pound cost to HMRC, and they also made a charitable donation of 20 million, which is always a, a nice way of buying friends. Um, 
or at least buying friendship of, of charity CEOs and, and management, but <laughs> that's a subject for another podcast. Uh, following this, uh, CEO Yetta Nygaard Anderson resigned with the media effect. Uh, these events occurred before she arrived, but I don't know if this reflects how the settlement was handled or the wider performance of the economy, sorry, the company, which some have described as lackluster. Now, uh, at the time, the group was being led by a gentleman called Kenny Alexander, who had left in 2020. Uh, the GBC group, as it was then, had a, a stellar growth, but uh, he was something of colourful uh, colorful character. And in 2020, he had uh, what they often call a moment of madness. Uh, he was unable to source a taxi, uh, and he took a delivery driver's car from outside a kebab shop without consent. <laughs> now, this resulted in him being banned from driving after pleading guilty to being over the drink drive limit, uh, uh, driving without insurance, and uh, he had to pay a £1,000 fine. So you could argue that this type of action suggests an attitude towards not following correct procedure. So are you suggesting that the Entain fine was over the top? Well, I just think that given what you might call an emotive industry, that they're an easy target. And it's important that they heed this warning because, you know, CPS and HMRC have slapped this fine on them and the fines go into the pot and will be very welcome. This is another form of taxation. HMRC won't need another excuse to uh, come back for more candy. Mm. Are, you, are you confident that it's the end of the matter? Well, in the interim results on the 10th of August 2023, Chairman Barry Gibson addressed this ahead of the figures, and he was at pains to put this issue at the door of the then management, uh, the GVC management. And he said that uh, the entain of today bears no resemblance to the GVC of yesterday, which had a different management team, a different strategy, and to be blunt, different standards. So that's reassuring. Um, management can bring in edicts and uh, controls, but you are at the always at the mercy uh, of rogue individuals who at best cut corners and at the worst enter into illegal activity, often to generate big balls. This is our hit those stretching KPIs. And ultimately, it's the business or the shareholder that foots the bill. Do you consider gambling an isolated case? No, I think oil and gas are a similar category. Uh, they were allowed to operate a loss at the bottom of the cycle. And when the oil price peaks, a windfall tax is introduced. Then if you remember the deep water, a rise in oil spill, BP, BP had to pay billions in compensation, uh, most quite rightly. But there were a lot of bogus claims. And it's my consideration that the courts in the US were very lax in in approving many of these, but why shouldn't they, as this was, a, in effect, free money from a UK business? Uh, who wants to pull uh, pull the shutter down on the free bar? But nevertheless, 301 people were convicted for fraudulent claims and 102 were sent to jail. Uh, banks, too, are also vulnerable. Uh, one incident, if I can remember correctly, was Barclays were fined 70, 70 plus million some years ago for having conducted... Um, not having conducted uh, the correct money laundering checks. Now, there was no proof of any money laundering, only that the procedures were not robust enough. So my wider point here is that there are certain industries that must be squeaky clean. Otherwise, the consequences will be more severe than for others. Gambling is certainly one of them. Uh, gambling, oil and gas, banks, and there are some others. They are the bogeymen. Now, when we covered Unilever, uh, you mentioned that Nelson Peltz had joined the board and was, well, your description, an activist investor. Uh, and the same has recently happened with Entain, I believe. Yes, following the departure of Yetta, uh, the CEO, Ricky Sandler has joined as a non-exec. He runs a, a fund, a hedge fund, Eminence Capital, and they own over 4% of the company. Now, Entain have been very acquisitive, and Ricky Sandler is critical of the record. He's quoted in the FT as saying, while we support the company pursuing seemingly rational acquisitions, funding them with highly undervalued equity is an empire building, shareholder value destroying strategy. Wow. Well, I mean, acquisitions can, can often backfire spectacularly, can't they? Yes, uh, they have been prolific in their acquisitions and are present uh, in countries uh, fr from Australia to Uruguay. Now, I always think it, it takes some time to absorb a new entity into a business. And this biz has been like Pac-Man uh, gobbling up gambling businesses around the globe. 
there's a difference between bold and reckless. Uh, unsurprisingly, if you look at the last interim results to the 30th of June 2023, entailed goodwill of 4.3 billion following a series of acquisitions that are asset light, and net debt stood at 2.6 billion. So these aren't penny numbers. So, Paul, uh, I, I've gambled. Um, I was in an office pool syndicate back in the day when I first started working, <laughs> when, they, when they were very popular. O off, office sweep for the national raffle tickets. I've premium bonds, which are a form of gambling. I've gone to the races for a, a day out and placed modest bets. But for me, this has always been an extreme, extremely fringe activity. Uh, I'm just wondering about you. I can't remember, I can ever remember you referring to gambling at all. No, I, I think my parents bought me some premium bonds. I, I have bought raffle tickets, um, but uh, I actually went to York races once and put some money on a horse and lost. And I think that that pretty much put me off. I think that's probably good. a good, a good start, isn't it? If you have a bad experience early days, then, uh, well, gambling is what I would call a Shakespeare industry. And uh, by that, I mean that Shakespeare is always relevant because he wrote about the human condition, you know, greed, pride, love, revenge, ambition, deception, jealousy. Now, when we covered focus, right, I suggested that as long as there are humans, there will be music. And when I think about gambling, it's the same. Um, I understand that gambling dates back at least to the Paleolithic period, and archaeologists have found dice and gambling boards. So for me, there must be control, but I don't think gambling can ever be eradicated, due, just due down to man's desire to participate. Um, it would simply go underground and give rise to some kind of Al Capone-type figures running a numbers racket and importantly bypassing all that lovely taxation. Now, if, if evidence were needed, Paul, of just how widespread it is, I was uh, in uh, going down Paseo Ahumada yesterday, uh, and unsurprised, I found a lady with a table doing the three-card Monty. Are you familiar with that, Paul? I, I am. I have seen yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it it, it never seems it, it never ceases to baffle me how long this game has been going. And if we had a time machine. And we were to jump in it and go forward a, th a thousand years. I bet they would still be playing this. Uh, and I'm sure people have seen it with th three cards or three cups or three shells with a P underneath it. And the, uh, the person's moving these around and you've got to guess where the P or the card is. And yesterday it was, um, it was three coasters, three circular coasters. And um, these were moving backwards and forwards and this is somebody who does this job day in day well, if it's a job this it's a contract basically um and they're doing it very very rapidly and it, people are always enticed to have a go to think they can beat the person who's doing this day in day out and i think what it, it proves is that um as pt barnum said there's there's one born every minute and some people <laughs> yeah they, they must have seen there's always a new generation but it's, it's like when we in the stock market when, when there's a when there's um uh when there's a uh, uh what's the word called paul what's the word yeah you're gonna have to edit all this out uh, uh, is the word is the word banana no no <laughs> when, i don't know what the word is no, it's when there's um a, a boom what's what's it called it's a it's a, a oh yes yes yeah right yeah yeah and it's the same in investing paul when when there's a when there's a when there's a bubble um it's generally because another a new generation have ne never experienced a bubble before so they're going through it for the first time and then you've got people who think they can outwit they're they've got some special power they're gonna out there's only one person gonna win and that's the person who's running the game uh they've generally got people helping them out uh, some stooges who they allow to win or uh, do things like misdirection but people are just drawn into it and i just think that that, that gambling will be um will be around forever because i just think it's part of the human condition that people want to win what they think is easy money uh, and they don't and um i don't know if you agree with that paul well they i mean they, they, some gamblers do win don't they but uh, i think the thing with with that is they will probably then go and lose it all again yes uh, yeah i think they, they have a very selective memory as to as to what they might consider to be a success i don't have a problem with people gambling i, th I think it's a bit like alcohol 
You yeah. know, people, if, 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 you know, pubs will keep selling you beer as long as you keep paying them. Uh, I think there's a lot of question about whether the gambling, gambling industry is doing enough to, to stop people from spending more money. Um, because I think, you know, it, like I said, if you ke- went into a pub and just kept drinking and drinking until you were completely paralytic, then the pub are supposed to chuck you out yeah. or stop, at least to stop serving you. Now, I think I've, I've read a few things saying that they're concerned that the gambling industry doesn't stop you from carrying on placing bets. Um, but I, I don't know how they're supposed to know. I mean, you know, online gambling, they're not going to know your financial circumstances or whether you just bet your you just bet um, your, your whole week's salary on a horse or something. Mm-hmm. Well, you mentioned that you know the link there with the with, with drinking. I suppose with 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 gambling, and you know, when you're burning through your money, there's only so much you can drink before you pass out. <laughs> That's the thing. There's yeah. only so much you can spend at one moment in time. Now, I could I, I could absolutely liquidate the whole portfolio if I so wished, um, everything that I've got. And just bet it just in one foul swoop, couldn't I? Just get rid of everything I've got overnight. That's where it's slightly different to other addictions. Uh, uh, tobacco, I suppose. A chain smoker can probably only get through eighty cigarettes a day. So uh, yeah, there's no, there's nothing to stop. Unfortunately, there's no, there's no sort of physical or manifestation of a problem, is there? If you if you just keep pushing, I mean, I've seen people pushing coins and coins into machines and you know pressing the buttons and nothing comes out, and they just yeah. keep going and going and going because. It's not like drinking and drinking and drinking where eventually you do fall over. Yeah. Um, so yes, I think I can see that, that there. Are, it, it, it. Well, I say it's a problem, but I mean the industry doesn't seem to have a problem with it. That's for sure. And no. um, they seem to be making an awful lot of money. And and like you say, it's a it's a human uh, condition thing. So there's always going to be uh, customers. Yes. Well, the, you mentioned about those machines and a few years back they were they were de- kept being described. Uh, as the the crack crack cocaine of gambling, these machines, and they did limit. Uh, I think they've got f- fixed odd betting terminals. I think is FOBTs, and they did restrict the amount that somebody can put in at, at any one moment in time. So you, you at least you're, you're you're losing your money slower. That's the that's the thing. But um, I, I thought we could just touch a little bit on ad- addiction because we had a bit of a, a conversation about this of what's the difference between an addiction and a habit now i um when i went when the, it, it, we mentioned about stackis earlier on and when they got bought out by hilton i went up to the extraordinary general meeting at the stackis dumblane hotel it was absolutely jam-packed it was, it was, a, it was a great day um lots of um free food and, and drink going around of, uh, of of top quality but they also had um some uh, croupiers there and some uh, casino training tables now i've never been to a casino in my life i've just been to one i think at the local cricket club which was a was it a casino or not? But it wasn't like it wasn't a proper wheel or something but this was like a proper wheel uh a proper chips so we weren't playing with they were just they didn't have any value, but you've got these tactile chips in your hand. And uh, it was very glamorous with the croupiers, all very attractive. Uh, they were women. Um, and they would send this this um, ball bearing around the, the, the roulette table. And it had that, that, that noise, you know. And it, I must say, it was very mesmeric. So I can understand how people get drawn into it, Paul. Yeah, it's an entertaining. It's entertaining, isn't it? And if you win, um, it's it's great. Yeah, it's, it's not not so good if you lose. But well, it's not just the person. It's it's not very often the families as well. It must it must be terrible. I suppose. Yeah. Part of it is if if you win, you think I've I've, I've got the secret sauce now. I know how to do it. So you you continue. And conversely, if if you lose, you want to win it all back again or or d- diminish your losses. So that's where you're perpetually on this on this on this wheel of, of not being able to jump off so it must be terrible it, it, it must be but equally there are other other things that so for, for example um elaine uh, who, who was a nurse uh elaine my wife she worked on a surgical ward and um previous to i think what they call gastric bands now they did an operation called stomach stapling now this is for people who just can't control their eating habits so to what extent do you what do you, what do you say that we'll, we'll, we'll stop producing Mars bars or to, to what extent do you try and bring controls in and 
balanced again that of its people's own i've got to be responsible for their own actions i, I think that that's absolutely right i think it's at the end of the day like a lot of things you, people do have to be responsible for their own actions and whether that's down to the i guess it's the way that you were brought up perhaps whether there was a lot of influence from your parents um, social activities, maybe if your parents were gamblers or if your mum liked to go into bingo and your dad liked to put some money on the horses at the weekend, I guess, you know, children just think that's perfectly normal. I mean, I think a number of people who buy lottery tickets. Um, yes. the, the, odds, well, that... the odds for a lottery win is just like astronomically bad. Yeah. But, um, you know, well, that... the, the, I hear that. You always get the hear, you hear the excuse all the time, well, somebody's got to win it. Yeah. Well, that was, let's remember that was brought in by the government to raise money for good causes. So I would imagine that I think I might have read some things that some of the money from the, goes to betting charities, doesn't it? I would think. Well, probably yeah, to stop people from you know, get them off the paying for the lottery ticket uh, addiction. Yeah. <laughs> the ironic yeah, situation. Yeah. But, I mean, again, he's. People, I mean, people certainly don't give money to buy the lottery ticket because they're thinking about the good causes. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that that nobody thinks that yeah. when they buy it they think it because they want to become rich yeah so um we talk about where well, we've heard people talk about mentioned or described as having addictive personalities so i don't know if 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 that exists or whether it's just something we we've got strong you know, other people are, are stronger willed you know i like i like a bar of chocolate paul but i know that after one bar of chocolate if i have a second one it's not going to be good for me so uh, I, I just know when to you got to know when to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I think like the same adverts, when the fun stops, stop. Uh, but but, um, the, but the gambling industry isn't going to ever be able to yeah, control when somebody stops putting money yeah. into the slot machine or or placing another bet. Yeah. It, I don't think the industry can do that. I mean, you'd think that they. It's a bit like knives, isn't it? Everybody expects the government to ban knives, but the thing is, that's not going to necessarily stop people from wanting to stab people. Yeah, it's just down to a matter of responsibility for your actions and self control. Yeah, well, I suppose if you if you ban knives, you'll they'll start carrying around some of the sharp implement, won't they? That's the thing. It's down to it's down to people shouldn't be carrying a weapon around them of any of any description. That's that, that's that, that's the thing. Um, now, I would just not, just, oh, I'm sorry, just, I got, I'm just just concerned we're getting a little off topic. <laughs> so. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was just going to mention about uh, addiction and um, uh, things like cigarettes and, and um, tobacco and alcohol. There are substance addictions, aren't there? But this is addiction more out of a behavioral habit addiction, is it then? But Or perhaps does it, does it stimulate certain things in the brain that give people that, that drug? I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll leave it at that. Yeah, uh, and, and and you obviously gambling on on the company, um, actually sort of uh, continuing to perform well in the stock market. Yes, I suppose. Yes, Paul. Yes, I saw. You know, there've been a number of twists and turns, and this company might uh, succeed or fail spectacularly. But uh, as you say, uh, it's a gamble. <laughs> right, Mark. Thank you very much indeed uh, for that review. Well, that's all for this episode. We hope that you enjoyed it. Please remember the content is for information only and it is not financial advice. If you have a question for Mark for our Question in a Bottle podcast, just complete the form on our website, thedesertislandinvestor.co.uk. Thanks again for listening. See you next time.